Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of our listeners, and welcome back to the Diversified Podcast, where we at Bond Protocol invite uh, great guests from across the crypto and DeFi landscape to discuss topics related to treasury management, DAO operations, and how to grow and scale different DeFi projects and protocols through prudent management of, of treasuries and the tools and technologies that underpin that uh, so we're really excited today to welcome on Ainsley, who's the head of asset management at Avantgarde Finance. Ainsley, can you give us a quick introduction on yourself, your backgrounds, and your your previous work leading you to Avantgarde? Hey, Joey, thanks so much for, for having me on, and very much appreciate um, the the spending the time with you today. So yeah, um, as I mentioned, I'm head of asset management at Avantgarde. I, I sort of joined the summer. Um, Prior to that, um, I was, uh, I, I guess, more focused on 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 the tradfi side in terms of my um, my longer term career. I started very much in on the buy side in terms of an investment consulting. Um, did a couple of data roles. Had spent some time at Bloomberg Fidelity, um, and then the large part of my career was at a, at a UK asset management firm. Um, focused on on multi asset. Um, have to go into you know what that means, but basically it's a bit of everything. You know, very much a generalist building portfolios, um, and managing assets on that side. Um, and then fell down the sort of um, the crypto rabbit hole from there. Did a, did a few um, pieces for for Masari um, uh, part time, um, and that got noticed by 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 Genesis. Where and that was my you know sort of full, first full time role in uh, in crypto for for better or for worse. Um, and then yeah, you know. Um, I, after that, I ended up at uh, Avangard. Also, did some um, academic research um, related to, to crypto as well. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much me. That's really interesting. So, you were doing some side projects, um, some research projects before you got identified by different crypto institutions. You recommend, or you said, uh, uh, Masari brought you on board to do a research project. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I, and you know. Um, um, in in terms of the program, I think it's slightly changed now. But um, Masari had a had a hub program basically where um, protocols and projects could commission research reports that were that would then you know um, Masari reach out to their sort of hub community and you know you could uh, all contributors could you know sign up for um, uh, contributing research to 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 these different reports. Um, so so I did a couple, one for uh, for, for for Uniswap and one for uh, Anchor Protocol. If you guys remember that one on on, on Terra. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, a couple of other bits for them as well. But um, you no, know, it was a really cool program. And, and from from what I understand, there's a lot of you know, um, uh, OGs in DeFi who who started in that program. So so yeah, you know, very much helped cut my teeth in terms of where to look for data. Um, you know, how to analyze that and how to how 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 to you know, think think from that perspective. Um, which is obviously has 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 some you know, I, I did a lot of research in, in Trafi as well. Has has some overlaps, but but yeah, the 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 quirks very much being I guess on the data side instead of having every Everything on one Bloomberg terminal, you you know, you got to put a bunch of APIs together just to get get the full picture on on any aspect. Um, but yeah, no, no, very much enjoyed it. Were there any specific parts of of crypto and DeFi that really piqued your interest during research that that caused you to take the red pill and go down the crypto rabbit hole? Yeah, it's a great question. I, they'll, they'll definitely, you know. Um, there, there are loads of aspects, and I guess it's everyone approaches it from you know it's it's such an interesting space. Everyone's from from very very um, heterogeneous backgrounds. For me, coming from TradFi, I guess uh, one 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 aspect that that really fascinated me was you know the just the the open source element and the, and the fact that the the flexibility you got in DeFi it was it was it was almost like TradFi was turned on its head. So you know within within traditional finance, all the most sophisticated players and investors. Uh, hedge funds etc have have all the access they've got you know they've got the flexibility and they 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 you know um they they almost can play the game their own way in and for retail investors you know the you, you kind of a lot more constrained of what you can do with, with with DeFi. obviously that's completely turned on its head where um or in terms of any of the players the, the whole idea of, of democratization you being able to do the the most complex strategies and having having sort of that same playing field if anything more flexibility than institutional players who you know have 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 different constraints and things like that. So so you know the that that was a breath of fresh air to me having been in TradFi in a very regulated environment. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. Of course, everyone needs regulation and in, in, in different ways. But but yeah, I, I've definitely felt the constraints having um yeah done a lot of spent a lot of time researching different strategies and you know uh, building my understanding of of how I would want to run a portfolio. 
and then when the rubber met, um, met the road being very constrained in terms of the instruments I could use and you know being able to implement some of those ideas so so yeah that it was it was that flexibility aspect and you know being able to if, if I think of really finance in general and, and, and portfolio management generally being um, one, one, one of the things that pulled me to that was the freedom of expression and being able to, you know, um, there's there's always something to learn. Um, yeah, where, 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 where crypto and DeFi was so appealing was that you could then go and actually implement and, and just build and just do the, do, do those things. Um, so yeah, that, that's, um, that's, that's probably the, the main pull, I would say. That's awesome. Freedom, power to the people and solving really complex data challenges if uh, I could summarize that a little bit. So mm. you're, you're doing these research projects. Um, you, you have this robust TradFi experience related to portfolio construction and management and asset management. How did you end up um, uh, finding avant-garde in Enzyme? Yeah, so, you know, I, I guess in terms of my, um, and, and, you know, hopefully this isn't reflective of, of my market timing ability, but um, yeah, you, previous to that, I, I joined, you know, as I mentioned, uh, Genesis, which was the largest sort of crypto lender and, and, and you know, um, market maker, etc. cetera, um, uh, in, in 2022. Uh, unfortunately, in terms of timing, I, I'd actually joined a couple of weeks before Terra Luna. Um, and, you know, I uh, won't go into all the war stories of, of happening there, but uh, it's uh, it's funny. It, it reminded me of, and this dates me a bit. Um, I, I graduated from university when Lehman went down, and there was there was some corollaries there in terms of the market environment, and and you know very much uh, jump, jumping in the deep end in terms of my first um, full time crypto role. But anyway, um, you know I I spent time, uh, you know I learned a lot there. Um, obviously things th things didn't quite work out in in, in terms of um, the market environment and that firm and yeah I was I was just finishing up my um uh, my PhD uh, after our, our post 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 sort of genesis beginning of beginning of this year and yeah um I came across avant-garde they they were looking for you know someone on the DeFi side and it actually funnily enough I I met that I I'd met the founder uh, years ago in my in my tradfi role um uh, it was it was a conference called uh, battle of the quants <laughs> and yeah you know uh, 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 um, that that uh, is is very interesting um group of group of speakers and they they normally have one of those being you know the um uh, within the crypto space because yeah uh, it's a quants paradise there's there's data there's liquidity um uh, you know depending on how how you define liquidity but um yeah they're the um, so so mona the the, the founder was uh, speaking there um, and yeah, you know, it's um, in terms of all the the uh, the kind of different aspects of the role were, were so interesting. Not just about being able to apply my um, uh, you know uh, portfolio management that side, the the you know my interest in DeFi, but also the fact that um, what's what's quite quite unique is that um, and you know we can come on to that. But Amagard is the uh, core developer for Enzyme Protocol, so there was the almost the infrastructure side and the technology side, and really being you know. The, the fact that it um, solves a lot of the pain points that I that I um, that I experienced myself as a, within Tradfi as a portfolio manager, you know, all those all those aspects were, were very interesting. So maybe there was some some fate about it. The fact that you know, um, yeah, I, I, I'd come, come across them previously, but um, but yeah, it was it was it was timing and and everything else seemed to work. You got to earn your stripes in crypto going through at least uh, one terrible market cycle blow up, but <laughs> you definitely uh, landed at a great spot at uh, Avant Garden Enzyme. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk more about Avant Garden Enzyme specifically. So you, you mentioned that um, it's a platform for solving uh, a number of problems related to portfolio and asset management. But can you go into a little bit more depth into what the problem statement is that you're seeking to solve and then uh, what Enzyme and avant-garde actually are. Yeah, so so um, yeah, yeah, Enzyme um, it it was founded as a protocol called Melon Port, um, and it's an you know on on-chain asset management protocol, um, and I'll talk about the different aspects there. Um, but yeah, it, it sort of I, I, it changed name um, a few years ago, and it was fully decentralized in, in 2019. So from from, from that um, avant-garde, which is a you know the the the, 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 the legal entity is a separate firm, um, that that started with the um, with the core developers of Enzyme, but also this asset management arm, which is um, you know as I'll go into, is basically the the you know a, a primary user of the Enzyme platform, and there's a number of synergies you have there between the technology side and the asset management side um but in terms of the protocol itself on on, on the enzyme front really it's solving a, a number of pain points i mean if you think of what there's there's you know it, it, what 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 everyone in this space understands of, of, of blockchain technology what it can all the um all the uh, potential use cases there 
it, there's there's a prime use case in asset management for a number of reasons, um, namely that you know if, if you think of what what the asset management industry is, it's based on trust really. That's that's all it is, and all, all these intermediaries in between are to fa- facilitate all of that. Why do you have a separate custodian that's not the manager? Is is you know, um, because you 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 can't hundred percent trust trust that the manager is gonna not gonna run off with the assets, and even when you do, it's legal contracts. It's you know they 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 um they they in terms of the fraud cases there there's 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 um it's not a full proof system and all the other parts fund administration reporting auditing you know a lot of these things that you know we it, ethereum basically is you know um a prime candidate for 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 disrupting and for or for for replacing um so so really it's 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 taking that taking taking the power of smart contracts and, and applying those to that asthma the yes management um uh, problems uh, and uh, one, you know, some some of the unique aspects I can talk about is that, obviously, self custody being a, being a, being a huge thing, and a huge advantage, being able to actually delegate to external managers from an enzyme vault, um, but maintain self custody. That's you know that that's a game changer for 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 a lot of traditional asset managers, um, and also uh, being able to have the flexibility at the same time to to for for a vault owner. Um, to set up their own uh, parameters, whether it's you know trading constraints, um, uh, risk controls, um, any a lot of things that you can think of, um, but enabling the asset manager, the asset, the asset manager of the vault to operate with full flexibility within those guidelines, um, you know, is is that kind of blend of, of flexibility plus um, sort of trustless delegation that that, that, that makes it quite unique um so yeah that's that's kind of enzyme in a nutshell it's plugged into all the all, all the major DeFi protocols as well and it's all within one ui so so anyone operating an enzyme bolt can 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 do it all from there um and yeah you know there's there's uh, there's 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 um also a, a lot of applications if you, if you take it to 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 tradfi so you know uh, obviously a lot of tradfi asset managers looking to get to 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 um, move in on the DeFi front um, avant-garde is is almost going the other way so so we've also got a regulated fund platform um on uh, which uh is powered by enzyme so everything's done on chain uh, we need there's a few quirks that you know you need to um, address when you when you're taking uh something that's uh, it gives you an nav every 12 seconds and administrators can only hand, handle it one, once a day for example so 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 yeah the, we need some innovation there in terms of uh smart contracts um uh, or a, a shares wrapper contract i should say um but yeah the essentially the the fund platform is a legal wrapper around these on-chain vaults um and you know that that's as as i mentioned because it solves a lot of those pain points it's it's potentially very interesting for 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 you know um fund managers who 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 need a legal structure etc um so yes that's the uh, the sort of elevator pitch in a, in a nutshell long elevator ride though but uh, yeah no, that was perfect. And thank you for demystifying uh, some of the complexities that exist with an enzyme, as well as the relationship with avant-garde. Um, so as far as asset management is concerned, whether you're an on-chain organization or a fund that's looking to participate with uh, enzyme, how do you know that they're ready from like a structural technology and maturity standpoint? What, what do you look for to determine this is an ideal opportunity or potential customer for enzyme or avant-garde? Yeah, so so you know, en- en- enzyme itself is permissionless, so so anyone can go on there and create a vault, etc. Um, in 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 terms of the um on on the the users th- that need a legal wrapper, um, or or you know the the regulated fund platform, the uh, at the moment, um, because because everything's done on chain, you know that the asset universe is is what's on chain. So anyone who is uh comfortable with that and wants to do everything that they can do within enzyme, but but with a you know through a regulated fund structure. Um, those you know they're, they're prime candidates um, at the moment. Um, yeah, there's there's I mean in, in terms of crypto strategies and DeFi strategies, there's obviously you know a, a, a broad space you can you can design across there. Um, but what we found is that yeah, it's it's actually the cost element that that that's quite interesting. So a lot of um, a lot of uh, hedge funds uh, that are just starting up or crypto funds that are you know um um uh, looking looking for a for 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 um an initial vehicle etc uh obviously because because we've dis- dis- intermediated quite a lot of those 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 steps with our um with with our infrastructure um the the pricing is very interesting to them um because of fun setup and a lot of the headaches you go through 
um, when you when, when you're starting a new fund is 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 you know one of the main pain points. Um, a lot of you know uh, particularly for a lot of um, for a lot of startup managers, they they really just want to manage money. They just want to you know um, they 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 want to invest. They've got ideas, investment ideas. Um, the rest of that the re- the rest is a headache for them. Um, so so yeah, in in terms of the prime candidates, it's it's usually. You know those who who um uh, you, they have an idea of what they what they you know crypto native have an idea of what they want to do on chain, um but um also uh, in in terms of their the setup you know if they're a bit more nascent then yeah you know the the kind of the lightweight uh, infrastructure that we have is 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 appealing to them. Are there any through lines for objectives and strategies and commonalities that you see across the enzyme vault deployments? Um, whether it's you know utilization of specific assets, whether it's combining different composable DeFi strategies, or is it pretty diverse at this moment in time? There, there's you know there's there's definitely diversity. I think obviously you know you you notice patterns. So so um, a, a lot of the vaults are quite trading focused, um, and and what I mean by that is you know if you look at the 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 assets that are most traded, they're the ones you you, you know you can guess those like uh, Rat BTC worth the, the the more liquid ones um there's but in terms of the integrations we have it does enable a lot of you know defi and enhancements if you want to call it around you know a, a traditional training strategy so um yeah in, in in terms of lending liquidity provision um whilst the, there's there's yeah there's there's less usage of those than than than, than the pure trading you, you do see that there's also obviously um you see some of the narratives um from from the broader crypto environment like come through on, on, on the platform usage so staking uh, this year um uh, been very popular um and yeah there's been a number of uh, interesting use cases for for enzyme vaults on, on that front as well um but but yeah you know um so it, whether whether it's lsc strategies or, or direct staking we have some integrations there as well on, on the enzyme side um there's been yeah um some usage on that front um in terms of um uh, stable coins so the uh, yeah the, it's 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 been an interesting environment there as well because um tradfi yields being being higher there's obviously that rwa narrative that's come through um and yeah you know in in terms of stable coins and lending that's there's been that's been less popular this year than than last year but a function of the environment i think got it and uh what do you think some reasons are behind that is it just uh risk free rates that you can get off chain and i guess what excites you most about bringing rwas on chain and is enzyme or avant-garde having an rwa strategy that they're looking to employ yeah, I, I mean, so so very very generally for me in terms of building blocks, I think um, f- fixed income, if I could call it that, from from the TradFi world is is a crucial building block for, for for any sort of strategy for for a number of reasons. For income, as you mentioned, for scaling risk as well, because there's different risk properties to to a, a, you know having 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 fixed yield in a in a in a with a with a stable underlying versus. Uh, some of the price fall of of you know um, other other tokens. Um, what's what's been interesting is yeah, just it's it's yeah. I, I I've been I, I was I, I was sort of surprised at how underdeveloped the um, fixed strategies or, or or the availability of of these types of instruments are, given that they're you know they're it's their their prevalence within within tradfi. Um, so you know in terms of integrations, we're we you know, that's 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 something we've we we we've been looking at and. Um, that's that's one of the nice things about being an avant garde, being the the prime user of the, of the inside platform. You know, there's that, um, there's that back and forth with 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 the technology team and the protocol team. So you know, we um where where we've got use cases, we can um yeah we, we can put those forward. Um, in terms of in terms of your question about our um real world assets, I think they're they're they're, they're interesting generally for um on chain for for. Uh, Similar reasons, uh, uh, although slightly nuanced, to 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 in tradfi, like why 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 do people bother with them um, with treasuries and money market funds, and why even during a very low interest rate environment was was there so much money you know in 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 cash on the sidelines if you want to call it that, um, is because ultimately you know they're diversifying and very lowly correlated as I mentioned to to risk assets. So uh, what's what's very interesting when you when you put on the the kind of DeFi lens is that um, not only are they diversifying to you know um, uh, um, uh, BTC ETH and other you know other tokens, but there's also uh, so far um, not been that high a correlation with on-chain yields. Um, and that's interesting because you know if, if I use a very academic term, people call that market segmentation, right? That that's um, that's it, it, it's uh, 
it, it kind of puts a bit of a spanner in the works when you think about oh uh, strategies such as arbitrage or carry trades where you know you're 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 um, borrowing a, a, at a low yield and investing the high yields because it's not it's not entirely clear how these things are linked and whether there should be arbitrage opportunities between them. You know why is it that you know, when when um, the maker DSR for example um, was uh, when when they raised that rate. Um, the, the, in theory, that that should impact a lot of the other rates, and you know you, you, whether you see um, that uh, or or tradfi rates leaking into DeFi and and then you know having um, impacting that and impacting the correlation between them, we've we've not seen that. So so you know, that's why our, our, you know, for RWA is is even more interesting um, within the DeFi and, and and the DAO space because yeah you know we, we don't have risk free rate here. Um, or, or you know where we've got proxies for even risk-free assets there yeah there's 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 tail risk and other 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 um, qualitative risks as well so you know in terms of um that the the key pillar for for for, for a lot of uh, um, strategies that that you know to focus on being diversification in, in our view um yeah they, they are interesting um but but in terms of um where where we are with that and integrating that yeah you know um that's yeah there's 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 some other challenges there which um yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, happy to talk about. Certainly a, a lot to talk through, but yeah, let's talk about some of those challenges. Um, like what are some of the major ones that you see for RWA adoption or um, just kind of bringing risk-free rates on chain? I mean, I think, I think that, um, so, so it's, it, it, it's, it's a strange one because as I mentioned, um, you know, the treasury being or a T-bill being uh, as close as you get to a risk-free asset in, in, um, in the off-chain world, Bringing it on chain introduces other layers of risk, right? You know, um, it, it, it's it's and there's there's obviously um, a number of different projects looking at this and, and ways to approach it. But you're you're reintroducing, you know, one, one of the one of the big advantages, obviously, being in crypto um, in the crypto space and so like self custody and all the um, all the things that enables. You're kind of winding back on that when when you're introducing that um, real world assets where you need a um, a centralized custodian to hold these assets you need you know and therefore um the operational risks that come with that also the um the 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 regulation around this is is you know still to be written it's it's, it's still unclear in terms of tokenized assets what um what what direction that might go and I, me not being a, a regulatory expert it did remind me a little bit of um the uh, uh the etf space within within traditional finance when uh um, the coming of age of, of ETFs and in, in a lot of ways looked a lot like and um, what we might see with, with tokenized assets is that you know it's, it's that middle ground where you're 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 almost transforming liquidity for, for, for some assets um, the underlying being uh, yeah uh, very very different from the underlying from the actual share that you're trading or the or the token that you end up trading um, so so anyway that's I've said a lot without saying much but yeah there's there's a lot of um yeah there's a lot of question marks around that and the additional risk that you get there which may or um you know may may be harder to measure um because because yeah you know there's there's it's it's more uncertainty than risk for for a lot of these things um so yeah those those are the challenges um uh, that said, uh, you know, uh, uh, undoubtedly it's, it, it's something that, you know, uh, I think uh, people are going to coalesce around, you know, a, a model that, that, that seems to work, that ticks all those boxes. Um, and then before you know it, I, I think it won't be long before, you know, people aren't talking just about treasuries, but about the broader uh, traditional asset classes. Um, and that's where, it, you know, it, it gets really very interesting. But because we see the two worlds, as, as I mentioned, you had this. We, we have this market segmentation, but um, yeah, I, I, you know, it's probably only a matter of time before before you see that relax and you see, you know, in terms of uh, different correlations between assets, shall we say, but also uh, a lot of you know very different opportunity sets, um, not just within uh, on chain, but also for for all these um, for for, for um, traffic institutions who who now have basically a you know a menu to pick from that's um, you know integrated between. Uh, on-chain and off-chain uh, assets. So you bring up the interesting topic of, of institutions and uh, whether you're at crypto conferences or listening to other podcasts, everyone is more or less just asking when institutions. Um, and so you've talked a lot about just inherent risks of, of on-chain assets, um, correlation with real-world assets, trying to follow like a logical progression that TradFi instruments have followed as well. 
Um, but what do you see as being uh, conduits that will bring the institution on chain? Do you, do you think it's just the space needing to get more mature and flushing out some of the, the Ponzi's and the scams? Um, and how is Enzyme approaching trying to bring institutions into an on-chain world? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I guess it's, you know, um, having, having sat on the, the, the other side in the institutional world for a while, um, it was, uh, yeah, you, you'd be surprised at how many of the, um, uh, should we call it, um, an, uh, anthropological challenges, shall I say, that, you know, institutions face. Um, with investment committees and you know um, uh, it's the so so maybe I'm going a bit off uh, off on a tangent here but with with crypto it's it's in terms of people's views on crypto um, yeah it, it, you know, I don't know about you guys but it, it's 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 quite sometimes it's not um, it's not the people you'd expect that are you know uh, very bearish on crypto or very anti crypto versus the ones who are pro it um, yeah it's not just about te the technology there's a lot you know it's it's, it's the intersection between economics technology politics all these things um and and that i i think that plays out with a lot of investment committees in the institutional side um you know it's not just an age thing where all, all the boomers you know are are, are, uh, are very skeptical of crypto and don't want to touch it and you know um uh, my, i mean my, my my previous uh cio who is uh you know a gen xer i guess uh you know was 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 one of the first ones who was who's very very interested in in bitcoin years ago in in, in my um in, in one of my tradfi uh roles previously um so so that's that that's what's difficult is because it's um because the way decisions are, tend to be made in institutions it really it, it depends a lot on the people um and because of that and be because as i mentioned you know it's quite um because it's quite a divisive topic yeah it can come down to that um there's also there's also you know uh, a timing aspect so what you tend to do is if if, if you have um uh, if you have call it a pro crypto person on an investment committee or someone who's who's you know um, recommended exposure or brought brought forward certain ideas within um, uh, within the digital asset space uh, and unfortunately they've they've had bad timing whether it was you know like my timing into the industry uh, uh, last year or, or otherwise um, it's it becomes very difficult then to sort of get the, the uh, you know in terms of your political capital if you've used that up already. Uh, you've had bad timing. I, I think, unfortunately, um, regardless of you know how sophisticated an institutional um, uh, investment firm is, there's always that human and behavioural element of performance chasing, which you know everyone says you shouldn't do, but everyone does. If it's you know if the number go up, as you say, you know on the crypto side, but equally anything with a with a with a good return is just easier to get through um, investment committees. So so you know you wonder whether oh in in a way. Um, you know the 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 current sort of um, uh, hopefully more more optimistic outlook we've had this year so far, um, uh, whether you know there's enough political capital still um, on on investment committees to to you recommend that. So so you know anyway that's that that, that that's one side of it. Um, there's there's the the other barrier is is obviously the you know um, the operational side. So so even though um, I mean it's it's interesting in terms of volumes when you look at you know see me futures now. Uh, Bitcoin, ETH, you know how, how, how the um, the adoption there just simply because it's uh, it's what people know in operationally. They don't need to get sign off for for you know ripping up the infrastructure and, and setting up something new. They can just oh based on what what, what um, their their platforms, the technology they have already, you know just get access to those um, to those instruments. You obviously see that with them um, with an ETF. It's it, it's that kind of ease of, of 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 you know um fitting into to 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 their infrastructure which is probably going to be a barrier for the the sort of um more defi native strategies that are going to be quite hard to port over um so so you know it's it's who knows the as as um uh, prices prices you know change minds so so if if if, if things carry on then, then you you might get some of that as i mentioned political capital but also you know the the um the the uh, intellectual curiosity to actually to, to, to put the investment in to, to, to actually be able to do do things more uh, in a more crypto native way um, but yeah and I won't even go into the scams and the politics but yeah obviously um yeah it does enrage me when I am um, <laughs> when, when 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 I watch the news or you know you all the highlights all the um the focus on the wrong things and the wrong stories w w within this space yeah you know it's it's very much a yeah you you guys just had Thanksgiving obviously you know in, 
it during Christmas. That's that's a good uh, barometer, right, for for what the um the 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 average normie or the person on the street thinks about crypto. And when you when you hear when you when you mention that you're in the space and <laughs> you hear what relatives uh, they 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 all know who S, who SBF is, but they probably don't know who Vitalik is, and that that, that probably says everything. No, I, I couldn't agree more with that Thanksgiving recently was certainly a uh, fun having crypto conversations at the dinner table, among many other things. Um, but yeah, SBF <laughs> was a topic of interest, as was um, Sam Altman, of course. So, yeah, uh, fortunately, I was able to deflect a lot of crypto questions to AI and everything going on there. Um, but bringing things back on track, you, you brought up super interesting points of managing uh, internal politics with clients that you work with, as well as trying to find a, a balance between performance chasing and risk. So for clients that uh, Avant Garden Enzyme works with, how do you approach uh, advisory and implementation? What are, what are some of the steps that you take to make sure that they start off on a right foot, have realistic expectations and are set up for success? That's a, a great question. Um, I I think it's you know, and it's it, it's sort of a lot of it is when uh, people use the term investment philosophy, right? Why 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 do people focus so much on that in in, in pitch books or, or generally? Um, it's because it's you know, um, you can build a portfolio, and that's a static you know, a static um, snapshot of your ideas at any point in time. But there's a philosophy and there's a process that generates that portfolio, and then you know, tomorrow, you know, the portfolio may change. But the philosophy and the process is, you know, what 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 what's um, is is the constant, and that's um, uh, obviously every DAO and uh, you know every every um, every asset owner investor, whether it's um, Travfi or or or, um, or or more DeFi native entities, they, they 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 have their own goals, their own time horizon, and it's over over that period of time, there's going to be a lot of things that you know you won't be able to predict. Um, and yeah, you know, the, the being able to communicate that investment philosophy and that process, and uh, you know, uh, at least in our view, at least having having a, a decent time horizon, um, that's you know, um, that's not going to be completely dominated by uh, you know some random um, uh, some random events, some 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 things you you know you can't control. Um, yeah, focusing on f- focusing on that process, the things that you can control, and 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 you know. Also, being very clear about um, you know the um, yeah the, the the level of uncertainty in the space, the the, the risks, or the um, you know leaving a, a decent amount of redundancy, I'd say, um, around um, and, and flexibility around what um, uh, what what your what your help, help um, on how you plan to um, help people reach their goals. That's that's you know that that's crucial. Is the, is the communication piece um, where 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 that can be challenging? Obviously, is that um, you know, I, I mentioned some of these investment committees. There's, there's, there's actually some academic research done on the uh, ten, average tenure of an investment committee member within institutional investors, and they covered all the largest pension funds in the world, um, and it came out, out to around three years, which is, um, you know, it's a long time in crypto. But as a, in, in terms of, you know, if if you think of the, um, uh, you know, the, the 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 time horizon for 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 most um, for most risk assets, that's that's not really a long time because um, there's so much noise when you when you look at you know daily, weekly, um, uh, on that basis. Uh, being able to plan anything uh, based on you know a one day, a one week, one even you know six month kind of projection of where you think prices is going to go is 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 yeah. I, I mean we think that's insane. So yeah, in in terms of time horizon, you know take those take t- take that uh, three year average tenure investment committee and now think about oh you know participants in a DAO, for example, and, you know, the the delegates and, yeah, all the governance challenges there, it's it, it's compounded in terms of this, um, you know, short-termism. So being able to get over that and communicate that, you know, we, we, have, we have very little control in the short term, but, you know, these these are the goals that we're working towards and the things we can control are the process and, and the philosophy is, yeah. Um, it sounds very, you know, it sounds very hand wavy, but it's very, very important. Um, having having people on board and being able to then, you know, um, as you reach certain milestones, um, yeah, yeah, show show that you are consistent to that philosophy and that you know, um, you're not sort of, uh, yeah, changing, changing, changing in direction of the wind every um, every every few days. Yeah, is is in the space in particular is is very important. So Ainsley, you bring up a really interesting point just about uh, aligning with uh, DAOs and institutions on their long-term objectives and, and just making sure that they're aware that there will be volatility in the market in the short term, but having that long-term outlook is is conducive to, to stable growth. Um, 
so when working with, let's talk about more specifically Dow Treasuries, um, what do they have to have in place already in order to work with someone like Enzyme? Do they need quants on staff that, that can help optimize the, the strategies? Do, do you help out there? What, what indicates a, a great customer, a great um, DAO to work with for Enzyme and Avant-Garde? Yeah, I, I basically when, when when advising DAOs, I mean, let, let's face it, all, all, all DAOs are very very different. There's, it's a very heterogeneous space, and you know, from from start to finish, in terms of the with the, the project, they're they're actually you know associated with the um, the the governance process, the individuals involved. Um, so so it, you know, it really depends. I I think where really the start is, you know, a, 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 um, a will and an understanding that you know. Um, uh, treasure management is important and planning for the future is important um and yeah you know that that in itself even though it's very 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 basic very simple um yeah you know there's 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 very mixed degrees of um um acceptance or or you know um, um being open to to any form of um external kind of advice when it comes to particularly to to, to the finances of a dao um but but other than that really one 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 key area um that's very boring, but but uh, you know is, is is an enabler for anything else. Is is some uh, you know a decent level of financial reporting. So um you know and I'm sure any any uh, any, any treasury manager will tell you this. You, you know you need an accurate picture of where you are before you can start figuring out where how to even get to your destination, right? Um and that that it it depends on the DAO, like you know um in, in terms of how sophisticated that is. Um, but the 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 way we like to think of things is. In terms of treasury management, really, what is it? It's, it's about decision making through time, um, and and being able to plan for the future. I think, as we um, as we mentioned previously, you know, uh, in terms of time horizon, there being a very heterogeneous um, group of utility functions within 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 a, um, a token holder base for a DAO. So, so it's really understanding the the kind of between between all these um, uh, all these very different interests, etc. The the underlying um, uh, goals that, that that they want to achieve that you know that they can they can agree on, um, and from that taking the their their current point in time um, position from 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 the uh, financial reports, and moving that to you know where where they want to go you know very very um very flowery but but you know it's as I mentioned that's that's the key enabler is it's having the will but then having the numbers, um to actually you know to actually start on that journey. Um, I, I mean, in terms of um, other, other, you mentioned enzyme as well. In terms of how how that plays a role, where there's been um, a lot of interest is is really from the infrastructure perspective as well. The 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 fact that um, it, because of the nature of DAO governance, um, having to uh, you know pass every single treasury management decision that you um, that that you want to make. Through through that whole DAO governance process, just you know, isn't suited to, to to the environment we we have in crypto, which is again very dynamic, changing all the time. There's there needs to be a degree of flexibility, and that's where, as you know, as we spoke about earlier, in terms of the advantage of Enzyme, it gives you that blend where you, you can maintain an asset owner, a, a, a DAO can maintain self custody, um, and ownership of its assets, but also um, through these um, through through the configurations of of a vault, give um, give enough flexibility for for a treasury manager to to you know uh, react in the with the appropriate cadence um so so in terms of passing through DAO governance and and you know the um the the uh, the, the what, what that enables is you know uh, you agree on whether, whether it's and um, with the with the, with the treasury committee etc you you agree on the right um, approach and the framework and then after that's passed through you know you you've got the flexibility to to, to react in real time um so yeah, that's the, that's the I, I guess yeah in terms of starting points and then you know all, all, all that and how enzyme helps. Um, hopefully that's helpful. No, it's extremely helpful. And given that we also uh, work with DAOs large and small, uh, you, you bring up a number of really interesting points. Uh, the first is that treasury management is a journey towards uh, actual objectives. So like, how are you going to steward the project to its next phase of growth through um, managing funds and, and treasury uh, assets? Uh, accordingly. Uh, and then also just making sure that you have the correct uh, decision-making uh, process in place that empowers treasury managers. Um, so a tool like Enzyme or, or perhaps Bond Protocol is uh, well-suited in order for them to um, actually get towards some type of treasury composition that makes the most sense for them. Um, 
but yeah, there, there is a level of sophistication involved, I, I think, in treasury management. You, you mentioned a baseline of, of reporting and just being able to understand, you know, your assets, your liabilities, fund inflows, fund outflows. Um, but Enzyme is, and you've demonstrated a fantastic platform for uh, mid to later stage projects that have a, some degree of treasury management and maturity in place. Um, so yeah, uh, Ainsley, thanks so much for coming on board Diversified. We really appreciated your your perspectives on a number of different topics, ranging from institutions, when are they coming, to what prudent asset and treasury management looks like, um, bringing more uh, f- uh, traditional finance concepts on chain and how we get to more of a utopic standpoint for, for management of DeFi treasuries and, and on-chain assets. Um, so thank you so much. We really appreciate the time before signing off here. How can folks get involved with you personally or with Enzyme and Avant Garde? No, thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, so so our, 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 our website's pretty good. Our head of marketing has done, done a great job there. Um, also, um, you can follow us on, um, on, on, on on our Twitter account. So it's just Avant, av, at Avant Garde Vi. Um, otherwise, you know, um, yeah, feel free to... Uh, Seek, uh, seek seek me out on LinkedIn if you want. I'm still still old tradfi habits. I'm more on LinkedIn than than, than Twitter though. I I need to change that. But um yeah no no uh, happy to hear from anyone. Thanks so much, Ainsley. We really appreciate your insight and your time here. Uh, and with that, we will wrap up this episode of Diversified featuring Ainsley of Enzyme and Avant Garde. So thank you to the listeners for tuning in. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We hope you tune in to the next episode of Diversified by Braun Protocol.